So today we're picking up uh, Patrick Farrell from um, Master Breeder. So what they do is they train people on how to free semen, uh, store it, AIs, uh, how to read equipment for progesterone. Everything that has to do with breeding, they, they teach you how to properly, properly do it. Um, a lot of people don't know how to do this in, the, in this industry. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of people don't even know how to do an AI properly or how to use a transcervical machine or how to do basic collection, how to check semen on a microscope, how to read ultrasound if they have an ultrasound machine how to check progesterone levels if, or, or even pull blood to check the progesterone level. They don't even know how to get the syringe into the vein and pull the blood properly. So all of these things, Master Breeder teaches people. So that's what they do. They're from the UK. They're a wonderful company. So we're picking up the CEO, Patrick Farrell. So we're on our way to the airport. I like to pick up people in class. So I'm trying to figure out if I should take him the Brabus, the Aventador, or the Black Series to get him in. The only issue I'm having is I don't know if he has any bags. So it might be best to just pick him up in the Escalade, just in case he has equipment with him for the filming for today. So let's go, let's get the Escalade. So we gotta get to the back garage, put the SUVs in the rear garage. That's what we built it for. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, so we're in the Escalade. We're heading to the airport. We should arrive just on time to pick him up. He lands in 15 minutes, but then he still has to get his stuff and, and, and come out. So we're, we're doing fine on time. We're gonna pick him up and go back to the house, pick up my wife, head to the restaurant. We're gonna have a little lunch on the beach and uh, welcome him to Naples, obviously. He flew all the way from, from the UK. That's a hell of a flight. Um, actually, I think he had another stop in, in, in the States the day before, and then he's coming here now. So it's quite a bit of traveling. I'm sure he wants to have a nice lunch and relax for a little bit, and then we'll talk some business. Patrick! Hey! What's up, mate? There he is! Welcome home! Cool. Nice things! You hungry? Oh yeah, let's, let's get something to eat. Let's get some food. Let's get some food. Yours? Thank you. You got it, brother. How was the flight? Nice! Easy! Nice and easy, bro. Love this car. Go for it. You used to this hot weather? No! Where I come from? Crazy, Ireland, we don't get this. We never get this. I know, I've been to Ireland plenty of times. Have you, yeah? I'm stuck in a hotel two days because of a snowstorm. Regular one, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nothing beats experience. No. I, I don't care how much education you got or how many books you've read, nothing beats repetitive exercise. Experience. Experience beats everything. If I do it over and over and over and over again, I'm gonna get good at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the more I see, the more patterns I have in my head, the more understanding I have of things. And you gotta give that knowledge to someone. You can try to explain it for an hour, they're not gonna understand. Mm. Because unless you put your hands on and do it, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. And everyone thinks, oh, if I was doing, I would do it like this and like this and like that. And I'm like, shut your mouth. You don't know anything until you've done it. Mm. And you've done it for 10 years, come talk to me. Until then, you don't know anything. I think also one of the big things is, is when someone's taught something, when they're educated on something, yeah. that's it. Like that, they just think, no, no, that's the only way you do it. And, that's, and it's not true because no, everything's always changing. Always changing. We know that these dogs, you know, depending on what breed, are different when it comes to progesterone, luteinizing hormone, uh, AIs, different things, you know, um, it, it, it really, you really have to home in on the experience. Because if you think you're just going to read something from a book or look at something on YouTube. No, it's not. It's just, no, no. First, first like, I, I, I tell people all the time and they always, they always don't understand. They're like, oh, well, you're doing something wrong. No, I'm not doing nothing wrong. Let me, let me tell you. Back in the day, I used to come home, my dog was pregnant. Literally, I used to come home and my dog was pregnant. I had one male, but I knew who it was, right? They tied naturally. Try to get a dog to tie naturally today. It's not happening. It's not happening. It really does, but it, it's Literally, not. To the point the dog smells the dog in heat and he comes up to me. Yeah. He's like, all right, do what you gotta do. Get your gloves on. Get, get your gloves on. Because yeah. that's all he knows. Yeah. He doesn't know. He's used to just getting collected. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So the dog learned the pattern and it's slowly becoming, it's being passed on. Yeah, they might hum for it. They hum from the side, they hum their head. They don't even know what direction to hum the dog in. Yeah. But, but knowing that is, is why the industry is so big now. Because if everything was just natural, then we would go, well, just let's not, let's just make natural where we're from or what. But now, no, no, I see a dog and I 
Australia, Japan, Mexico, Canada, Living South Africa, Africa, England, Ireland. Yeah. I want that dog to be part of my program. And unless you know these things, unless you're educated on yeah. motility, progressive motility, morphology, velocity of semen, chilling, freezing, reawakening, thawing, TCI, AI, unless you know all these things, in my opinion, your business is gonna struggle and your program's gonna stay the same. And, and something we just talked about was people look at their business as in my town or in my city, it's so small. No, minded. that's small minded. It's, it, it's ridiculous. It's small minded. And, and those are the cracks, man. Those are the ones who are always running their mouth like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know nothing. No. You know nothing. You're, you're, you're still at a very small scale. Until you get to that large scale, you really don't understand yeah. the entire story. You don't understand the entire formula to make this work properly. Yeah. And then things change. I haven't had a female make milk in five years. Yeah, I know. All my dogs are too fed. It's the man-made, it's, it's, the, it's the man-made breed. And listen, we're in an industry now that people need to get to learn this more because people are buying these dogs yeah. because they're trying to get into it, maybe from another breed, yeah. all right? But they don't understand that these things can happen. They happen. That's the problem. You know? They don't understand that at all. The biggest issue I have with people is not understanding progesterone machines make a difference. Yeah. Progesterone machines, you cannot compare a laboratory's machine that costs God knows what to the 25000 5000 or $1,000 machine that you have. All different. Or your veterinarian's cheap machine that he never calibrates. And they don't understand brands of machine and why that makes a difference. And then they're like, well, my dog, I'm not getting pregnant. Mm. Or it was on her ninth day of heat. Forget all that nonsense. Yeah. That is like shit that you learned yeah. in the 1960s when they didn't know yeah. their ass from their head. Yeah, yeah, that is yeah. Not how it worked. Yeah. That's not science. Well, back in the day, if I shared, it used to be put them in the channel. Yeah. And leave them there for two weeks. Right. And then you didn't have to worry about it because <laughs> they're gonna deliver naturally. Yeah. You, you didn't need to calculate for a C-section. Imagine you don't have the ovulation day mm. and your dog goes into heat and your dog eats the day before. Temperature doesn't drop. Which all these things happen. But she's in labor. But you don't know that she's in labor because she has zero signs of labor. Mm. And this happens all the time with babies. And then they die inside her. Yeah. And you still don't know that they died inside her because she's still acting normal. Yeah. And next day you wake up, you find a dead dog with yeah. nine dead puppies yeah. inside her. Yeah. Yeah. Because why? You didn't have a date for the C-section because you didn't know when she ovulated. You couldn't count the days to her C-section and you weren't prepared for it. Mm. You just assumed she'll go into labor, I'll have sign, I'll take her and then. It does not work like that. Do you think, right, I'm not, I'm, I'll answer it after you, but do you think that people are shooting themselves in the foot because of what you just said, they get into these dogs, they spend so much money and they've got the best intentions. Yeah, but they have no concept of understanding of anything. They don't understand reproduction. They don't understand reproduction. They don't understand reproduction. Yeah. They don't understand progesterone. No. They don't understand semen analysis. Semen analysis. They don't understand the difference between, an, they don't know the difference between an AI, a, a transcervical and, and a TCA. And, and a surgical. Yeah. Well, you guys don't yeah. do surgicals in Europe, but yeah. you know, we do those here, but a, a TCI versus an AI. Yeah. You know, and to why it's important in some cases. Some some dogs have a reverse uterus. Yeah. So they don't even know that's possible. Yeah. They don't comprehend that. They don't get it. I mean, I mean no. those things are actually available. Like you just said, they're available here. There's actually one guy that does them in Ireland. I think there's one lady that does them in England. But here's the thing, because somebody sees you talking about it and they think, oh, I I'll go, they go to their vet, they say, I want a surgical, and the vet's like, what do you mean? They and don't they, even and they don't, they, they don't they even can't know. comprehend, they just, they look at something and they take it as gospel. I seen it on YouTube, I seen it on Instagram, I seen, so they just think they can watch something and mimic it it's and it's gonna work it for them. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. You have to have the proper education. Yeah, 100%. And you need, to have the, you need to have the team. You need, you need to work with the breeder. You need to work with a, with somebody who actually knows reproduction. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and at the end of the day, you can, you, listen, you can have the best dogs in the world. I say this to people all the time, you can have the best car in the world, the fastest car in the world. If you haven't got a driver. You ain't gonna make it. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna cut it. So that's very important. Yeah. So we're gonna discuss that later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After we have uh, food. some food yep. and some stuff, mm -hmm. and we'll get back to the house and discuss it. All right, bro. Hi guys, Patty here from the Master Breeder Academy. I am at the world's renowned compound at Muscle Tone Bullies with Bashir and his family. Just to make you aware that next year, me and Bashir are gonna be co-hosting an event in Florida. This year, we're doing a VIP event in Tampa. If you're interested, get in touch. One of the team will go through an interview process with you, see if you're a good fit. And yeah, guys, thank you and all the best.
Yeah, they hear they hear stories from Joe Schmo about this and that, and everybody makes up their own story, and there's so many lies and exaggerations. Yeah, it's the world of gossip. You know what they say, right? Well, it's the world of dogs. It, it, it's the it, world in general. If you look back, even in the Roman days, Marcus Larry said, "Stupid people discuss people." Yeah. The normal people discuss discuss events, but intelligent people discuss ideas. So if we're sitting here, we're discussing an idea. We're discussing how can we the business promote? How can we help other people? The industry. Business. How can we we're help the industry as a whole? We're trying to help other people. We're giving ideas. We're discussing ideas. That's the intelligent person, someone who's sitting already at the highest level. Versus you got those who are in, you know, sitting in the middle, who are more discussing the the next dog show, or the next video game, or the next, you know, DNA blah 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's not, I mean, that's your average person. It's not a stupid person. It's just your average person and your average concept of entertainment. They're looking for entertainment. They're not looking to improve. They're just looking to enjoy and have fun. You know, mm. that's the average human being. But then you got idiots who have nothing to do else than to discuss other people because they live through other people by hating on them or wishing they were them because they're not willing to do the work. So th these are the three types of characters you have. It's been around since the beginning of time. Yeah, it's, you know? in, it's in the industry and it comes from if they can't get to that level, then how do I bring that level down to me? Yeah. How can I pull that down to me? And like, that's something I always say to like my clients and students, I always say, don't get involved. The but best response almost, it's just me, the best response is no response. But that's rich coming from me because I told you earlier, somebody gave me a bit of slander one time and I just screenshot all the people wanting to send me money and I posted it. So that is a response in a way. Mm -hmm. But I suppose you can't help but think, you know, it's a bit annoying, especially, and I'm sure you've got this before, people you've helped, people you've brought up, uh -huh. people you've educated. Uh, you know, you only knew. Yeah. Yeah. You, you need to, this is what I mean, you know, and it's, it's unfortunate, but it's going to happen. And I think by us experience, uh, experienced it in this past year, we can show the next generation that, look, this is going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And this it's is how you need to deal with it. And this is how you improve your business. So those people don't matter. Yeah. You know, they don't matter. But as well, as well, even if you try to teach it to a lot of the next generation, they have to have. They have to have the character to go through it. Yeah. And everyone's, I got the character, it's me, I know what, but they really don't have the character. No. And and you could tell just by the way they say they have the character. Yeah. If you're not stopping and thinking, can I handle this? Am I the man for this? If you don't think, your brain doesn't work that way, you're already, I already know you're not the man. Yeah. Because a, a person who can handle this is someone who can break down a situation. Why is this happening? Mm. Well, how does it affect me? And how can I turn this negative into a positive? How can I make this work for me? Yeah. So if you're really concerned with, with opinions of people about you, you've already failed. Yeah. You already failed. If, if, 100%. 100%. So I think the, the, the biggest issue you have is, uh, is characters. They're yeah. weak characters. And you just said it there now. It's almost like evaluating a situation that you can look at and go, how do I manage this? And for me, I knew that the people who whatever, you know, slander or put down, those aren't my clients. No. Those people are never put money in my pocket. No, but those are your workers. Yeah, they're your workers. They're your yeah. PR team. They're your marketing team. They're marketing team. You know, and, and they don't understand. I think they eventually understand it. Or, nah, you know, they never get it. Maybe, but I think there's a smart person that'll chat to them and say, listen, none of you understand what you're doing. They still don't get it. Do you think? No, I know. I you tested know? it. I put it to the test. I, at first, at first when they were doing it, I was very confused. I'm like, why are they saying these lies about me? Yeah. You know? And then I noticed they were saying lies about the people. I'm like, why are they saying lies about this person? I know this person very well. This is not true. And and I couldn't comprehend it. Because if you're not one of them, you can't understand them. Mm. So for the longest time, I was confused. But then when I realized how every time they did it, I was making money. When I saw the pattern, like something's going on here. Yeah. Like, why would I concern myself with how they think of me when they're such a small percentage versus they're making this whole world get eyes on me yeah. while they're doing it. And when yeah. I realized that they don't go to sleep, and I told you that story earlier where they started talking crap on one of my posts. Well, for like a day and a half. It. The next day I woke up, <laughs> 24 hours had passed, the evening had came, yeah. and they were still going. And they were, so I, I literally scrolled back to the messages and look at the timeline. And it was literally over 30 some hours straight. They never went to bed. Like a handful of them just never went to bed. They just, every minute, to five minutes, then they would disappear for an hour, they'd be back again. It's like, they never really went to bed. If they did, they slept an hour. So you couldn't find employees like that if you tried. No, who, and who it's consuming their lives. It's good, they don't understand that you're consuming your own life. Go away, become more educated, associate yourself with people who are being successful in the industry, and you'll be a lot happier. But that's just what we have to deal with. So, Bashir, we have been speaking for a while, yeah. me and you back and forth. Obviously, I've had 
students in Ireland and the UK and your names came up a few times and then uh, I get speaking to a guy in Australia who I thought these guys, you know, they got it together. But I got confused because the guys in Australia, obviously we're out there, we've we fantastic clans out there. We did New Zealand, we've South Africa, we're, we're, we're across the world in regards to our breeding. But what I come to learn was these guys who set up, if you don't mind me saying, no, like that's a it. three, four million pound compound. Yeah. They had muscle tone in their name. Your name kept coming up and it was associated with muscle tone. And I was like, but they, my students told me this guy's in America, but these guys I'm speaking to is in Australia. And then when I actually spoke to my friend, Paul, Paul Kelly in Ireland, he says, no, those, those guys work together. Bashir's the guy with the dogs, he's the main man. And I was like, oh, so this is, I need to speak to Bashir. So me and you spoke, I think, what was it? A year ago, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, like a, a year, year ago. Over, year and, a half. and then, and then we came back in, and then uh, we were going to do this later. But you says you're in Texas. Get on a plane, come Correct. down and see me. You put me up in your house. Yep. Your wife made me the best old fashioned I've ever had in my life. Sure. We had, we had, uh, we had a meal on the beach, and and now we're here. And you know what? Like, I think for people like us, it's just we deal with so many clients around the world that this is normal to us. Yes, it's normal. Correct. But if we can show these breeders, these veterinarians, whoever, give them the correct education, they could be doing this. Absolutely. They could be worldwide. I, I think this is a huge thing in the, that you're, you're, you're done doing this. And, and for the people who are watching now, they need to understand is that owning dogs is not enough because if you, have to, you have to manage the income in and out and all the expenses. If you're paying for a vet every time your dog, you know, needs an AI, uh, you're paying for outrageous amounts for progesterone, if you're paying for blood being pulled to doing tests, mm -hmm. if you're paying for you know freezing semen or collecting semen and shipping semen, you're not doing these things yourself. Scanning, if you're not cytology, exactly, all these things. All these things, it adds up. And it adds up, especially when you're doing it at a big scale like we are now, but but even in a small, especially on a small scale, because your profit margin is smaller. Yeah. It adds up. Mm -hmm. And it's up to thousands of dollars a year. Um, more importantly, you become not the most educated breeder. So if I were to come to you and, and you're like telling me, oh, you know, I'm selling this dog for $10,000, but I'm having a conversation with you about basic things and about breeding and you don't even understand the terms. You don't understand how it works. You couldn't perform it if you needed to. It, it makes me question, why am I buying a product from you? Like, mm -hmm. how do I know you know what you're doing? Because anybody can just buy two dogs, take them to a vet and do a breeding, you Easy. know what I mean? But you should know how this works. You, sh you should know your ins and out of your business. 100%. My father told me a long time ago, um, whatever you do, learn everything about it. Know it from head to toe and backwards. Mm. Be able to do it with your eyes closed and then go do it. Yeah. Don't touch it until you do. Totally agree. You know? So once you understand, then you go do it and then build a bunch of experience before you open your mouth. So yeah. you have to build experience. So for years, we, we did breedings and breedings and people talked and thought, we never said a word, we never educated anyone, we never taught anyone anything because I considered myself a student for the first 15 years of my life, a student of the breeding business yeah. of the American bully. As, as I was creating the line, I was still a student myself of my own art. Yeah. And until I figured out how to you know, master it or lock it, thanks to God, I didn't consider myself a master at it. And that's where you come in with your name, right? Yeah. Master breeder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so at the end of the day, you, you need you need to educate yourself. I'm glad you ha have you because what we're going to do now is we're going to have you give everyone an education on muscle tone. So you're going to hit all our kennels who are new, who are starting off, or some who have been around but need a little more education. Yeah. And you're going to teach them how to collect properly, extenders used properly, how to freeze, et cetera. AIs, obviously, they know how to do it, but give them a, a, a more deep tutorial, in-depth in you know, lesson on it. So, you know, and at the end of the day, to get that certificate, it means something. To get a certificate from your from your academy, yeah. it stands for something. Yeah. And we'd like to have that behind Muscle Tone. 100%. 100%. So I, I think it's, you're going to be a great asset to us. Thank I, you. I 100% think that. Thank you. And, um, and I think any breeder who can benefit from 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 you guys will, will announce your website on the thing so they can reach out to see you. Look, we, we, we've talked about it. You know how important it is. And you, you said something there. You, you were in your own lane. You were doing your own thing. And for years, that's what I done. I had one dog, one dog. That dog took me around the world. The reason yep. I have 500 students today is that one dog. His name's Gatsby. He's retired now, but that dog, when I- Very famous dog, by Very the way. famous. But the, the, the thing is, like, if I didn't know how to ship semen, if I didn't know how to free semen, if I didn't know how to hold myself accountable and be professional, people wouldn't work with me. People would be like, listen, no, no, no. And even to this day, if I ring you up and I say, Bashir, I need semen tomorrow. And you say to me, yeah, you know, I, I'm going to go to my vet. I'd be like, what, what do you mean you're going to your vet? Like, are you not that professional enough to know, be doing this yourself? I need it, like, you know? Mm -hmm. And now I won't, me personally and the big breeders I know, they don't work with 
that clientele. And now we're speaking to veterinarians and like they're getting in their reproduction side and, and they don't even have dogs, but they see the value it adds to their business, you know? Right. So look, Bashir, I want to say, before we come on the camera, I said thank, thank you to you and your wife. Take me to your house, do, you know, let me stay here for a couple of days. Absolutely. Meet all your dogs. And, and before I go, everyone knows that, you know, the type of dogs I'm into. I seen dogs today that I've never seen before. Like, never. And I'm not just saying that because I'm honest when it comes to dogs. If I don't give you, if I don't give you my, my opinion on dogs, I probably don't think they're great. Fair play to you, mate. What you've done, how you've created this industry inside of what everyone's trying to do and it's 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 incredible mate so listen fair play thank i'm you, honored sir. to be you know working working with you and uh, i look forward to the future thank you thank you i appreciate it very much Gentlemen. thank you thank you absolutely hi guys patrick farrell here from the master breeder academy guys we are the world's largest one-stop shop when it comes to your education but also your equipment when it comes to reproduction we do everything from ai kits to ai education courses progesterone testing machines to progesterone testing education and that's right across the board maybe cryo tanks teaching of freezing semen cytology semen analysis everything when it comes to the equipment and everything when it comes to the education fully certified courses at master breeder academy guys if you'd like to get touch head us up on our website at masterbreeder.com or head us up on any of our socials at Master Breeder Academy. Thank you. Share a question. All your boys you have, you have Nemesis. 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 Yeah. I can't believe it. I think I know We have Nemesis, Beanstalk. Nemesis, Beanstalk, um, Kong. Kong, Apollo. Apollo. And Titan. And Titan. Now we have a couple younger males. Okay, coming through. They're going to Australia as well. Okay. Uh, like uh, Fuji Jr. And we have Champstock, uh, Merle. Beanstalk's on the really big one. Okay. They're going to Australia. Beanstalk's going to Australia. So, the men, the, the males that are staying are Nemesis. Apollo, who's gonna be with me forever because he's already 10 years old. He's your boy. It's my boy, right? King Kong, which I love very much. And then um, Titan we have, I mean, if someone makes an offer, obviously, but he's not, we're not looking for a sale for him. Yeah. He's, so you don't actively you know, look sales for your boys. No, if not somebody, for these males. If somebody comes along, yeah. you know, you'll, you'll entertain and you'll listen. But yeah. right now, you're not actively on the market looking for your boys. No, then I don't need to sell them. They make me money. They're like a, they're there just making money every month. Yeah. So they just bring Three, It's reoccurring month. revenue yeah, so in your business. Yeah, so I don't need to sell them. They, yeah, they're making me profit every month. Like Trisha said earlier, it's not it's not just the stud fees. Even if you studded, you know, each dog five grand a piece, you're making 20 grand a week, yeah. 80 grand a month, but that's great. But uh, there's also the production. Like, yeah, the puppies. When you have access to such studs, you know, and then they're constantly producing such consistency. You saw the consistency when you came Oh, 100%. Out. So that consistency comes from the fact that I bred this line for so many years in the right way the genetic that the pool itself the gene pool itself is just it's just so consistent yeah so that i know how to tweak it in which direction with what dog yeah um and having access to my own males that way yeah not only saves me from having to ship frozen semen or ship chilled semen or having to go access it's there i can see it i can vision it it allows me to produce the proper litter yeah. it also allows me to market the dogs properly to price the puppies properly because I have access to the dogs on hand. Okay. Once they leave my yard, I lose that access. And I'm hoping that the person who purchased them from me comes, continues that that same same process. Job that, yeah, process yeah, that yeah, I started process. by keeping it marketing. I know Jamie in Australia, or all my muscle dog kennels, they'll do that job all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, I'm managing, managing and helping them do it. Yeah. And, um, and I know that I picked partners that I know are solid. You know, Jamie's a solid dude. But when I sell to like, your average client some of them just want the dog as a pet yeah yeah. so yeah. i lose that market with that dog yeah he might be a producer but 
the marketing behind it is as, as important as the producer itself. Yeah, of course. So, you, and you lose these things. Just on that, so something obviously you know what we do. We we're big in the line breeding. That's all. That's all we ever done. Line breeding, yeah. But I do a lot of it. The, the you know the closest line breeding for me, you know, it wouldn't be in the factor of a, a father, a daughter, or a daughter. But you're a bit different with yours. Like you, oh, like yeah. you, you got a C section tomorrow with a, a huge mating. Tell me a wee bit about it. No, I'm how close so to the line it is. Mrs. Micro is a King Kong daughter. Okay. And I brought her back to King Kong. Okay. So it's father to daughter breeding. Yep. That is as close as I do. I do a lot of it. It's a lot of my consistent came from that type of breeding. Um, but I'm very careful. I only breed a father to a daughter if the male is almost perfect and the female is almost perfect. I don't breed a flawed female back to her father, and I don't breed a flawed male back to his daughter unless, unless I know what he's producing and I've already seen it with my eyes. For example, if I were to breed Beanstalk, it's flawed. If I were to breed him back to his, one of his daughters, which I have done once or twice, it has to be the immaculate female. And I know that behind her, there's so much that can correct the issues I got from Beanstalk. Also knowing that Beanstalk's parents themselves were practically flawless. He just happened to have a little bit of weak pastures, which is a sweet. He's not as flawed as people think he is. You saw him move today. He no, moves, no, he's looking sweet. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's he's got weak pastures and he yeah. hogs a little bit in the rear, which is not that serious of an issue considering the mass that he carries. So I do father-daughter breedings. What I don't do is mother, son. Mother, son. Breeding. Explain or why. brother and sister. All right, so let's start like this. A lot of people don't understand how genetics work. They're, they're, they think because they read a book and they read this, and they think because it's a, they understand the box of genes, the little X, where like, oh, 50% from the mom, 50% from the dad. What you're talking about when you say 50-50, you're not talking about the gene line. What you're talking about is chromosome. That's the 50-50. You're gonna inherit 50% of the chromosomes from mom, you're gonna inherit 50% of the chromosomes from dad. But how's the gene line work? There's, there's 78 codes in a gene, all right? In females, most of those genes, when you look at them and the way they're attached, they never skip a digit, unless they have a mutation. If they have a mutation, they skip, okay? But you never see it. If you pull the code, you never see, well, let me rephrase that. There's some issues where you see it. How do we know it's there? Well, there's one way we know it's there. When the female goes to produce a litter, she constantly passes on that mutation. In her offspring, you see it. Okay. Then you look for that particular gene issue back into the female. Okay. Now you can isolate it maybe, sometimes, not all the time. And sometimes they say, well, it's a new mutation is what they call it. But from my research I discovered, it's not a new mutation. The female carries it, but it's we don't have the female. Not, right, but it won't come there. out in the offspring. And it, you it won't see it in the offspring. Yeah, yeah, I got it. And you'll see it in the male offspring. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not in the female's offspring. I got it. And sometimes in both, but most of the time in the male. Yeah. And it came from the mother, but when you go to check the genetics on the mom, it doesn't appear. Yeah. So then what, what doctors type is called, it's called a new mutation. The two were not compatible, they cause a new mutation. But there's another theory behind it, which I'm a higher believer in that I read in a journal, is that the mutation is there, we just haven't figured out how to find it yet. Okay. And it's always carried by chromosomes from the female, okay. right? So, so therefore, and, I, and I've built my line based on that theory and it works very well, proves that that particular journal makes more sense than the journal that, oh, it's a new mutation. Yeah. So could it be a new mutation in some cases? Sure. Caused by certain strange chemicals or maybe caused by, you know, a, a mutation is whenever a strange body meets a chromosome mm -hmm. and it doesn't accept it. Then it forms a new cell it's passed. that causes a mutation or it takes away a cell that causes a new mutation. So in that, in that particular aspect, could it be a new mutation based on maybe a vaccine or maybe on maybe the foods has some sort of preservative? Yeah. Anything is, is possible. It's daily dead to death. It's I'm possible, saying. but we can't prove it. Okay. So, and I don't like having um, calculation on something I can't prove. Ba that's called a theory. Yeah. Can a theory work? Sure. But what we know for sure is that this particular female or this, is passing on the same issue yeah, over and over again. because we see it in the offspring. With, offspring, with different yeah, yeah, males. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But yet when you test her, there's nothing wrong with her. Yeah, I, I understand. Right? Yeah. So which theory makes more sense? The journal that says to me, hey, it's not a new mutation. It's a chromosome that's there, but you can't see it. Okay. It's recessive. 
but we can't see it. We don't have the technology to see it. Yeah, to assess okay. the gene. Or versus, versus, oh no, it's just a new mutation, they're not compatible. It's not that they're not compatible, it's the female herself. She keeps passing it on. Yeah. So now, let's first say I did breed her to a male and I got lucky, and I call it lucky, and she didn't pass it on. I end up seeing that same issue with her daughters passing it on with a different male, completely different. I can't keep saying to myself, oh, it's constantly reproducing a new mutation. No, I need to eliminate all of that female's line. I get it. So why do I never breed a daughter back to her son? I had these dogs for now, I don't know, 12 to 16, maybe some 18 generations. I personally had hands on the dogs and I know what I did and what I didn't do with which dog and what dog and how they were all put together. So I know the dogs that I eliminated from the pool because I know they were bringing me bad stuff, got rid of all the stock, even if they were like five generations back. When I realized it, I was like, you all gotta go. Start it over. And it's a lot of things people don't, a lot of times people don't do that. They, they're like, oh, I'll, I'll keep fixing it. No, there's things you fix and there's things you get rid of. But how long? That theory is fine. But then surely, in order for you to see that in the offspring, you would have to breed the daughter to another the dog. You have to breed it to more than one male. Yeah, exactly. And that's how it wouldn't... started. Right, yes. okay. Originally, that's how it started. Like, okay. I was told, oh, they're not compatible. Yeah. This is the old theory yeah, back yeah, in yeah, the mid 2000s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, all right, I'll breed it to another male. But then I get the same problem. I got you. And another one. And I had this issue. Are you solely three... focusing on the female, though? Well, at that time, I'm realizing that it's coming mostly from the mom. Okay. And not from the male. But are you still finding yeah. that? No, because I cleaned it up. I don't have that I issue. I got you. Anymore. Okay. Gotcha. I haven't had that issue in over a decade, but. That issue was very common. And always people like to blame the male. Now, there's another I thing. I would agree with that. Yeah. I, I would actually agree with that a million Correct. percent. Scientifically speaking, most recessive genes that are caused, that cause autoimmune diseases. Yeah. For example, um, a low immune system that would cause a problem with skins like Skin demodex. Skin or paws okay. and ears. Or a problem with yeah. astrophy. Yeah. Or, or like spinal astrophy. Always comes from the female. Always comes from the female. Males, okay. will, males can carry it. Yeah. And you'll you'll see it displayed in them. Yeah. Females will not be displayed with these particular diseases visually most of the time. But they're very rare. It happens, but it's very rare. Okay. But the males will never pass it. Only the females will pass it. Only an XY chromosome can pass that particular type of mutation over. Okay. Well, this is the worst kind of mutation you can have in your dog. The worst. So if it's coming from a female line. I need to get rid of all those females and never breed them. But the male never passes it on. He never passes that gene ever, ever, even though his mother carried it. Okay. He doesn't. So, so it's the, the females really we need to look at eliminating, in your opinion. More often than more the males. More often than Not yeah. always. Okay. Some cases it's the male, but in most cases the females carry more issues than the male. Way more issues. Okay. That's interesting because recently I've came across a particular line of stud dogs that are passed that are puppies, offsprings, are having issues with uh, like butterfly vertebras in their back. So when you say this, that makes more sense what you're saying. I think that just is an experience of mine in that particular line that I found uh, uh, butterfly vertebras mm -hmm. in the male's offspring. But now that you say that, that makes more, that makes, you know, I'm gonna look into that more. It's interesting. Yeah. And, and, and I always found it interesting in another, in another aspect too is that a lot of people call their bloodline after their mouth. Like, um, I hear people say, oh, Magoo blood, Magoo blood, Magoo blood. Okay. There's no Magoo blood, it's muscle tone. Magoo is not made of one dog. Muscle tone is yeah, not yeah, made yeah, of yeah, just yeah, Magoo. Yeah, yeah. Muscle tone is yeah, yeah. 15, 16 different main dogs that we built on, right? You can't have a bloodline off of one dog because that means you're telling me that that one dog is the Adam I of, of the breed. Yeah, okay? yeah, it's so He's true. He's God's first creation. It's so true. And everything was perfect yeah. and he had no flaws and all flaws came after him. Yeah. Because if you're building off of that one male. So you can't... But, sorry for interrupting, but I think though what we need to explain though is that that hugely is impacted by males that you could put to... There's males out there that you could just put to any female and because we base 99% of a success is on its looks, there is males that you could put on the ugliest female in the world and they'll, they'll produce good. Beanstalk will do that all day that, long. That's what I mean. But, but appearance is not everything. No, no, I know that, yeah. but, that's my, but that's my point. Yeah. The, the, this industry bases on uh, visual, but we know that there's a lot more to it than that. So these, these are like um, very important things that breeders don't understand. 
They, if you if you told a breeder to name you, if you told the breeder how many chromosomes there's in a gene in a gene code, they don't know. But if but, you told them what is it, draw one down. Just draw draw a blood. But hold on, they even, don't know how to even draw if we don't, don't do that, even if we just sit here and have this conversation, let's be honest. Yeah. Can you have this conversation with most breeders? No, you cannot. <laughs> they, 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 they don't, don't know, know what's going on. They don't know. But that's where you come in. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think that that is also why they they don't succeed because they don't have understanding. Yeah. Anything. Their breeders are obsessed with one thing, a drawing that they saw on the internet or in a book. I agree. And they're like, that's, that's what the dog is supposed to look like, like yeah, that and picture. That's it. This is what it's written in the AKC or the UKC or the ABKC. First, that was written by a breeder, not a professional scientist or anyone who understands anything about skeletal or health. Or, it's just the idea. They saw a dog. That dog won some shows and they're like, oh, we're going to make all the dogs look like we're that. We're going to base it around that. We're, we're going to base it around that. We're going to pick this dog and, and this is what we're going to base it on because he won so many shows. Yeah. Especially in, in the ABKC, like uh, where, where we had a lot of these guys have never been in the AKC round or the UKC. They think it's like a, they breed for all these healthy dogs. Manchester was the busiest, most prestige dog show in the world. Yeah. And you've ever been to one? I, I Well, I was supposed to, but I didn't turn yeah. up. So <laughs> most of those dogs are screwed up. I agree. They're screwed up. Yeah, I, I 100% Some of, agree. And they look great in the ring. Yeah, they yeah. look great in the But then the floor. he left it in. Yeah. And then he left it out. Right. Yeah. But you see him outside of the room. I Good understand. handling. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and it's no different than any other dog. I base my dog's health on time says it all. How many offsprings? How long did you live? How long did your offsprings live? How strong did they live? How well did they live? Okay. When you show me a record, of any breeder, 10, 15, 20 years, and all his dogs are living that long, 10, 15, 20 years, and they're living, 20 may be exaggerated, but at least 15, 10 to 15, right? Yeah. And they're living perfectly good lives, no issues with their hips, no issues with their hearts, no issues with their joints. They're, they're you know, like you saw Apollo. No, no, yeah, How I've many seen battles this dog had? And yeah. you saw him move like, no problem. like there's nothing to him. You think yeah. he's five years old or three years old. You know, I mean, and, and, and that's what you want to see. Let's, um, yeah. let's not give away too much of the knowledge because next year I want to I wanna get you on a stage preaching this because this is what we need to know. This is like the, one of the, 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 this is the thing that even the huge, like the huge breeders but are still wanting to learn need to know. They need to have these conversations. It's mm -hmm. so important. So uh, let's not drop all the bombs just here, Bash here. Let's keep some of that in that head. Well, then let's do it. I'll get Honestly, on the platform with you. We'll talk seriously, together. Seriously, mate. That's so fucking... feel a wee bit. Get a wee bit of goosebumps. So I do this. <laughs> really good. Yeah, we can You're do that. You're not allowed to give anybody else the chill. <laughs> <laughs>